Welcome to the um, January 9th meeting of the Board of Adjustments. Uh, my name is Philip Lukadu, and I'm the Director of Planning and uh, well, actually the Director of Development and Design Services. And I am calling the meeting uh, towards tonight in the absence of our chairperson. And um, so I would like to open the meeting. And uh, as a matter of proceeding, we would elect a presiding officer uh, for, the, uh, for the meeting tonight. And with that, I will open the floor to any nominations uh, for the presiding member of the board. I'd like to nominate uh, Mr. Ewer. Okay, we have a nomination of Tom Second. Moore. Second. Any other nominations? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? <coughs> I'll turn it over to you, Mr. Ewer. Thank you, Mr. Luckadoo, and good evening, everyone, and welcome to uh, the City of Morganton's Board of Adjustment meeting. Uh, we're going to hear one case uh, today uh, regarding an application for a new telecommunications system here in the City of Morganton. Before we begin, it's important for everyone to understand some important facts related to this meeting. This is known as a quasi-judicial proceeding, which means it functions such and much like a court proceeding in which one's individual's rights are being determined. Only persons who can demonstrate that they will be affected by the outcome of the decision are allowed to participate <coughs> as parties in the proceeding testimony be, be limited to only those issues concerning whether the application should be granted under the zoning ordinance. Before we move to the question about the new telecommunication system tower, uh, I would uh, bring us to order and ask for you to review. I, I, I believe the board was distributed uh, the minutes from the last time we met. And if you feel so inclined as a membership, I would ask if there is a motion to approve the minutes from last time. A move to approve. Motion's been made uh, to approve the minutes from last time. Is there a second? Second. Uh, motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion related to the minutes from last time, additions, corrections, or deletions? In the, of the, in the opinion of the chair, hearing none, I would call for the question. All in favor of the motions, all in favor of the minutes being approved as they stand, please say aye. 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 Opposed, light sign, hearing none, motion <coughs> carries. At this time, we'll move directly to the item on the agenda, having no old business, that is the uh, uh, approval uh, for the request that was received from Cello Partnership doing business as Verizon Wireless for the construction of a telecommunication tower at 1609 Bethel Road. Are there witnesses tonight who would appear uh, and w wish to be heard? There are two witnesses, and I'm the attorney for Verizon. Okay. And uh, on behalf of the city, will there be a presentation? Yes, sir. At this time, I would ask everyone to please rise and take the oath. Do you swear? or affirm that the testimony you are about to give tonight is true. Uh, if that is the case, please acknowledge by saying, I will. I will. Thank you very much. The order of business will be to hear from uh, Mr. Luckadoo, and then we'll hear from Verizon in the order and the manner within which you uh, would like to proceed. There'll be opportunity for questions to be asked. Um, certainly, uh, the board can ask questions as of, of any witness, and uh, we'll we'll afford the opportunity for any um, any one from the the parties to to uh, ask any questions that they would like to have. Mr. Lugadu, at this time, I'll turn the proceedings over to you for the presentation. Thank you, sir, Mr. Uh, Chairman, members of the board. What I would like to do is just present our staff report and you see on the screen our location map showing you where the property uh, in question is located and that is at the intersection of Drexel Road and Bethel Road and the um, tower would be in the kind of the 
southeast corner of the property. And this is a, a closer look at the site and actually shows the, the existing zoning and surrounding zoning uh, to the property. And this is a um, utilities map showing water and sewer and um, in that area is that are the only utilities that we have. And then our traffic map showing uh, approximately on Bethel Road, approximately 3,300 vehicles per day um, as the 2016 traffic count. And the proposed future land use um, for the telecommunications uh, tower site, which is showing residential low density. The um, <clears throat> The tower is a, proposed to be a, a 194 foot uh, tall monopole with the, we, with the um, I guess you call it monopine is what we, we tend to call it. We have one here in, in town, as you know, on Steeplechase Drive. And uh, it, also, it, it also has with that a five foot tall lightning rod. So the total height of the, of the tower is 100 and, um, 199 feet. The, um, section of the of the zoning code um, or, or telecommunications towers are allowed in the HID but the section of the zoning code that requires it to come before us or come before the Board of Adjustments uh, is found in 3.4.7 H5 and, and basically um, it states that the board, board of Adjustments shall consider the issue or consider and issue if appropriate uh, permits in all cases where the zoning administrator is without authority to do so and, and one of those um, sections is for an alternative tower structure. Well, the the um, administrator can issue a permit for anything in the EID district, zoning district, uh, and then anything that is an alternative tower less than 100 feet. So this doesn't kind of fit any of those criteria uh, by which the zoning administrator can issue a permit and therefore it goes before the Board of Adjustments uh, for approval. Um, section 3.4.7 H6 provides the specific requirements for the issuance of, of the telecommunications towers. And the other thing, and I, and I gave you, I handed out, and I'll hand out to you guys as well what I handed out to those, to the board, is, is basically sections of the code, and I gave you, uh, provided you space to, to take notes with which to, as, as we proceed through these, uh, presentations that you can take notes and you can find your um, findings of fact as, as prescribed in the code. But, but um, you really have in your, in your code kind of three areas that, and that, the way that I've laid this out is, is really three areas that you have to consider. And that is that the application must be complete. And then I've listed what the, the listing of, of the requirements for a complete application. And staff has reviewed that, and it is a complete application. I uh, just wanted you to have what was in front of you, or what, it, what, you're, what is required of you in front of you. And the proposed tower will meet all the requirements of paragraph 6, and I have those included in there as well. And the issuance of the permit will help accomplish the policy set forth in paragraph two, and I've included that policy for your consideration. And then you have to make certain findings, and, and those are listed as well. Um, and then number five of the handout that I gave you uh, essentially says that if you find there are certain conditions that are necessary in the issuance of the permit that you have the authority to um, to state those conditions by which you would issue the permit. With that said, uh, staff has reviewed the application submitted on behalf of um, Freddie Clark by Baker Donaldson, uh, Behrman, Caldwell, and Berkowitz PC. Uh, it is found to be in compliance with the provisions of section 347H for sufficiency. And, um, and then the board, so then the board therefore has to uh, take into consideration all of the evidence and and then make uh, their findings according to 3.4.7 H5. I did have uh, I did have slides uh, in addition, but I think maybe in the interest of time, <coughs> I think they're all the same slides that that the uh, applicant has. Um, I'll run through those real briefly, I, I suppose. 
the this this map shows the, the as part of their application they had a um, a digital imaging company to go out and take pictures from certain vantage points and the way that they do that is they they'll take a balloon and fly it up to the height of the tower and then they use that information and then they digitize in what the pole what the the tower structure would look like uh, if it were installed and so those those were in your packet um, but they're also here and then this is the the site itself what would be what would show in the center of the actually I can showing where the tower would be and then all the ancillary equipment that will go along with that tower and they show where that tower would be in relationship to the property this building here is is Cheryl furniture if you're familiar with that and then this just goes through all of the pictures with with the if you this is the uh, what the balloon this is the balloon right here And then just from different vantage points, and then these also correlate to the the photo simulations uh, later on, showing the what the tower would look like. And I think there are more of the more of the balloon um, locations than there are of the, the actual simulations. And then this shows the balloon in the caption with the tower in this spot. I'll just identify the tower for you in each, each one of these. Just a few more. And that concludes staff's report. Thank you, Mr. Luckadoo. Uh, for purposes of the record, I would uh, accept your document that you handed up to the board entitled Criteria for Issuing Issuance of a Telecommunications Tower Permit by the BOA as Exhibit Number 1 without objection. And, no objection. Then, and then I would uh, accept um, your proffer of these photographs as exhibit number two and then sub parts A through however many they were for purposes of the record without objection. Given that, at this time, I would ask the members of the board if you have any questions for uh, Mr. Luckadoo. Uh, may I ask one question? Please, sir. Uh, I would presume that the community around the proposed location has received some kind of notification. Uh, I, I understand that there has been a sign posted there, but yes, sir. anybody, I don't know who would have standing, uh, you know, to speak uh, for or against it from the surrounding community at this point, but I, I presume that they received some kind of notification. They, we, we did our standard notification, which is uh, that we, noticed it in the paper uh, as required by state law <coughs> installed the sign on the property as required and then we also uh, we also sent out letters uh, first class letters to all adjacent property owners notifying them of the meeting and and the, and the application and whatnot we we received one call today and and it was from a gentleman who actually lives on the site and he just wanted to make sure that it wasn't part of an annexation proceeding that it wasn't part of an annexation? An, an annexation proceeding by the city. That's the structure that's in the middle of the property? Uh, no, sir. It's actually on the... If I can get to it quickly. It's, it's on the corner of the property, kind of away, away from the...
So it is, is where this red dot is, is located is the site. So there's a home, there's a house here. Looks like a manufactured house from the aerial. I'm, I'm not sure if that is still there. Okay. And, and then this is the, the site. I'd, I'd also like to know uh, what else, if anything, can be placed on that entire parcel once the tower is there. It, it may be that nothing additional can be placed on that, it, and for, but I don't know that. What, what would happen if anything were to be placed on the property is that the location of that tower would be taken into consideration, and there are, um, there are required setbacks of, of a foot for a foot uh, to any adjacent residential properties. So if, for example, if, they, if the property owner were to subdivide off, say, this corner, it would just have to meet that distance requirement to that property line. So we wouldn't, we wouldn't allow a, a, so this would be the, the permitted use here, and we wouldn't allow a, um, a new parcel in violation of, of those setback rules. And, and will Verizon own the, the actual property up upon which the tower is mounted, or do they lease that, or? It's my understanding that it is a lease, I'll, but the, the applicant can verify that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the board before I ask a couple? <clears throat> Mr. Lockadoo, you mentioned that the staff in reviewing the application had deemed it complete. Yes, sir. With regard to uh, section 3.4.7 paren capital H in paren, you also said that the staff, as I recall in your presentation, had uh, found the application to be conforming with that section of the zoning ordinance. Is that correct? That is correct. And I just <coughs> want to be clear then um, that with that, um, you, you, it's your testimony that uh, with regard to paragraph six and the criterion, criteria that are set forth therein that the staff would believe that paragraph six and the criterion criteria therein are conforming. Yes. And the policy uh, that's set forth in paragraph two is conforming as well. That is, that is something that, that the board has to evaluate and, and make that decision um, as part of their proceedings. Okay. Um, do you have any concerns that the uh, structure that's being proposed by the applicant would have a, a deleterious impact or, or particularly from a visual perspective uh, for the city of Morganton? I don't know that I can, that I can answer that. It, it is a, I mean, it is a structure that is uh, not dissimilar from uh, other structures that are, that are currently uh, existing in the city. It's consistent with other structures that are already here. It well, at least one. Right. Are you familiar and have you had an opportunity to review the letter in the applicant's file from Mary Pat Tyndall, the site acquisition uh, re relative to the uh, opinion that she stated that there were no existing towers located within a one-mile radius? I have, yes. And do you have any calls to refute that opinion? I do not. Are you familiar with uh, the letter written um, dated May 16, 2017 by Bilal Shaki, who was with uh, Cellco Partnership DBA Verizon Wireless? He's the design engineer wherein he opines that uh, there is uh, no alternative tower structures available um, regarding this project and that uh, there's not an opportunity for co-location with other towers. Do you have any calls to refute his opinion regarding that? And you've had an opportunity and referred to it in your testimony about Gould Imaging. Uh, are you comfortable with the, the imaging service provided by Gould Di Digital Imaging that in fact what's represented is as accurate as you know it to be? Yes. And uh, with regard to the issue around the um, 
the, the height of the structure and whether or not it creates an issue <coughs> with regard to um, the uh, airport authority. Are you familiar with a set of emails between the applicant's attorney and Brett Brinkley, airport manager for Foothills Regional Airport? Are you familiar with those set of emails? Have I you am. read them? I am. Uh, in those set of emails, there is an opinion set forth by the engineer hired by Mr. Brinkley on behalf of the airport, wherein he opines that the construction uh, of the applicant's uh, telecommunications tower would not create a problem for purposes of uh, the height restrictions. Um, do you have any cause to refute that opinion? I do not. Mr. Luckadoo, those are all the questions that I have. Any members of the board have any additional questions or questions based on what I've asked? Would the applicant like to cross-examine or ask any questions of uh, Mr. Luckadoo? Thank you, Mr. Luckadoo. You're excused. trying to bring up her presentation. So. That's fine. Chad, can you come and look at it? Thank you, Mr. Luckadoo. At this time, I would uh, ask the applicant to come up and, and uh, we'll entertain your presentation. Good evening. My name is Laura Good. I'm with Baker Donaldson, and we represent Verizon Wireless and their application for zoning approval for the proposed tower. Uh, my business address is 1501 Main Street, Columbia, South Carolina. However, I live and work in Raleigh, North Carolina, and and practice, uh, licensed to practice law in the state of North Carolina. Um, here with me tonight is also Mary Pat Tyndall. She is with Fast, Fastcom Consulting Services, and um, she provided the information regarding an inability to co-locate that was presented with the application. Uh, she worked for Verizon Wireless to find the location for the tower based on the network objective for this tower, and she's here to answer any questions you may specifically have about that process and the facility siting. Um, also here this evening is Emily Long. She is a radio frequency engineer for Verizon Wireless. Um, Bilal Sh Sheikh, who provided the signed documents in the application, the network objective statement, provided the search area map, um, the inability to use alternative tower structures document. He was unable to attend tonight's hearing due to a scheduling conflict, but she does the same job as he does. She's reviewed all of his statements and s discussed the site with him and has the same training and education that he does and is here to answer any questions you may have about those statements and the need for the tower in this area. Um, at this time, I would like to enter into the record a copy of the application as filed with Exhibits 1 through 18. Without objection, we'll receive that and mark it as Exhibit 3, I believe is where we're at in the process. Okay. I also have additional copies for the board members if they would like to have one to read along or... I don't know if y'all received a full copy of the application. I think they've been distributed, have they not? We okay. have that, but Perfect. you're welcome to give it to us if you're so inclined. Okay. 
Um, and at the same time, I have um, a hard copy of the um, PowerPoint presentation that I would like to enter into the record as well. And I have hard copies for the board members if you would like to do to have that to read along with as well. So we'll mark the uh, application that you have uh, as Exhibit 4, and then we'll do the uh, hard copies of the uh, PowerPoint presentation or photographs as Exhibit Number 5 without objection. As Mr. Lookadoo indicated, my, my PowerPoint is very similar to the one that he's already shown you. It's just for visual purposes as I go through um, the application for you. Uh, the proposed site will be located at 1609 Bethel Road in Morganton. Uh, the property is owned by Freddie Clark. And uh, this is a copy, just an enlarged version of the overall site plan so that you can see where the tower will be located on the subject property. Uh, this also shows where the access will be off of Drexel Road and shows that um, the existing property is already vegetated with tree cover. Um, you can see what's marked as a new tree line and basically that just means that um, in order to construct the access drive and the facility compound, trees will need to be removed but Verizon will retain the maximum amount of vegetation possible so that it will serve uh, to uh, screen the use from adjacent properties and that, that new tree line is where um, roughly the tree line will be retained around the facility and the access drive. The property is approximately five acres and it is zoned HID um, and new towers are permitted in the HID district as Mr. Luckadoo uh, explained so long as the facility meets all of the requirements of section 3.4.7H of the, of the um, ordinance. And I will um, try to uh, base my presentation on the order of the uh, handout that Mr. Luckadoo presented to you. And there's a copy of the detailed site plan. So on the first page of the handout that Mr. Lockadoo provided, the criteria for issuance of the telecommunication tower permit by the BOA, um, Mr. Lockadoo did state that um, staff found our application to be compliant uh, with all of the uh, requirements of the ordinance, but I'll briefly go through these just for your purposes of filling out this, this handout. Um, the first section talks about how the applicant must provide letters um, sent to owners of all existing towers within a one mile radius of the proposed site. Um, as documented in the application, um, with the inability to co-locate statement, section, uh, Exhibit 8 provided by Mary Pat Tyndall, um, a search of a one mile radius as well as the search area for the tower was done by Mary Pat um, and no existing towers were found within a one mile radius or within the search area for the tower. Uh, therefore, there were no towers to provide letters to for co-location. Um, the exhibit uh, five of the application shows the search area map. And basically the search area uh, is the area in which the Verizon wireless engineer says, you know, this is where we need to be located in order to meet uh, the network objective. Uh, the network objective statement for you was provided as, I believe it is exhibit four to the application. So the search area map shows where the facility needs to be located within to meet that network objective. And the first thing that uh, site acquisition does is they go into that area and they look for co-location co opportunities because it is much quicker and much cheaper to co-locate on an existing structure than it is to build a new tower. So that was definitely the first thing that was explored and as evidenced by Exhibit 8, um, there was just no co-location opportunity within that search area or within a one mile uh, radius. Uh, the next item on item B is a summary explanation as to why the applicant believes the proposed facility cannot be located on an existing tower. Um, again, I would reference Exhibit 8 of the application, the inability to co-locate statement. Uh, item C 
is a summary explanation why the applicant believes that the use of alter an alternative tower structure is not feasible. Um, I would reference Exhibit 9 of the application. Uh, this is the inability to use alternative tower structures that was presented uh, by Bilal Sheikh, the radio frequency engineer for Verizon Wireless. And to summarize that statement, um, essentially, alternative tower structures such as small cell or DAS, uh, those are evolving technologies. And I, again, I'm just trying to summarize um, the statement. However, the RF engineer is here to testify in case you have questions about it. Um, small cell or DAS uh, technologies really are, based on the statement, are um, really designed to impact uh, high density uh, urban areas, uh, such as shopping centers, uh, college campuses, um, or busy intersections in a, in a highly trafficked area. Um, small cell and DAS technology is designed to uh, impact, they have a, about a 500 foot to 1,000 foot uh, radius of coverage. So they are for high traffic areas to provide a small solution about as far as you can see. And they also are going to be much lower to the ground, usually no, no higher than about 40 feet off the ground. Uh, so they are just not appropriate for the type of um, facility that this site is, is proposed to be for, which is to provide a large amount of capacity offload in a large coverage area, also in an area that has lots of topography changes, as you have in your beautiful city here of Morganton with the hills and the foliage. And that all, again, is just a summary of Exhibit 9, and Ms. Long is here to testify uh, further about that. The fourth item, D, engineering report studies and assessments demonstrating that the location of the tower in the proposed district is necessary in the interest of public safety or is a practical necessity or technical requirement and will provide the highest optimum level of coverage. Um, I would point you to exhibit four of the application. That is the network objective statement provided by Verizon's engineer explaining the need for the tower. Um, this tower, as summarized in this statement, is to provide capacity offload for an existing Verizon wireless site. Um, that is the High Peak Hickory site, located approximately 1.5 miles to the west off of High Peak Mountain Road, if you're familiar with that tower on that mountain. Um, essentially, there's two reasons why you would need a tower. You would need either coverage or capacity. Uh, coverage is the whole, if you've seen those commercials, can you hear me now, can you hear me now? Do you have a facility that's covering the area? Capacity, however, goes again with um, each cell phone facility has a finite capacity to handle the demand of its customers in that area. So once the demand of the customers exceeds the capacity of that facility, a new facility is needed, and that's the situation here. Again, that's documented in Exhibit 4 of the application. Uh, item 5 or E on your sheet is evidence that the proposed tower is structurally designed to support at least one additional user, together with a statement that the owner of the tower is willing to permit one or more other users to attach its antennas to the towers on a commercially reasonable basis, which will not interfere with the primary purpose of the tower. Um, evidence that it's structurally designed to support more than one additional user is Exhibit 6, that's the site plan. Specifically, sheet C8, and I believe I have a copy of that right here. Um, as you can see, above the proposed lessee antennas, there's uh, room showing space for an additional user. So there's our evidence that it will be designed to accommodate an additional user. Also, Exhibit 11 is the statement from Michael Haven, who is the real estate specialist um, for Verizon Wireless. Uh, certifying that they will make the tower available to additional users at commercially reasonable rates. And then the sixth item F is a site plan indicating compliance with paragraph six. Uh, the site plan shall indicate a location for at least one equipment building in addition to that proposed for use by the applicant. Um, again, I would point you to exhibit six, which is the site plan in the application. And as you can see, this is a blow up of, uh, I believe it's sheet C2, and that shows, um, let's see if you can see my cursor here, that shows the space for Verizon's equipment, but there's also space within the compound for three future co-locators for their ground equipment. They're meeting that ordinance requirement. <coughs> 
Um, moving on to the other um, requirements for a tower from paragraph six of the ordinance. Um, antennas and towers may be considered either a principal or accessory use. Um, as Mr. Lukadu uh, stated earlier, there are existing uses on the property. This would be an accessory use on that property. Um, subsection B, communication towers shall be constructed and shall at all times remain in compliance with the applicable building codes, safety codes, and other rules and regulations issued by the FAA, the FCC, or any other federal, state, or local authority. Further, communication towers shall not be located or operated in a manner that restricts or interferes with air traffic or air travel to or from any existing or proposed airport, including local airports. Specifically, a, an approval letter issued by the FAA shall be required for each new tower site. Exhibit 13 to the application is our letter of our FAA determination of no hazard letter. Also, we have um, the correspondence that Mr. Yor spoke to earlier um, with Brent Brinkley, the airport manager for Foothills Regional Airport, uh, certifying that there would not be any um, interference with their air traffic at that airport. In addition to the FAA letter and this correspondence with the airport, um, other evidence in the application that we'll, we will be in compliance with federal and local codes. Um, we do have the NEPA summary, which is Exhibit 17, the application that um, is our federal requirements being FCC licensed, um, basically our environmental review and approval for the site um, to meet environmental uh, requirements at the federal level. Item C is that the base of the tower shall be enclosed by a decay resistant security fence or wall at least eight feet in height unless the tower and all guy wires are mounted entirely on a limited access building, which is not the case for this site. And anti-climbing devices shall be installed on all towers. Um, exhibit six of the site plan shows the proposed fence that will be eight feet in height, and you can see on the detailed site plan here that we do have a fence proposed around the facility. In terms of anti-climbing devices, there will be barbed wire on top of the, uh, of the fence to prevent climbing on, on the facility. Item D, unless specifically required or authorized by either the FCC or the FAA or by some other federal or state authority, no illumination shall be permitted on any antenna or tower. Um, as shown on the site plan, uh, the tower elevation sheet, this tower will not be lit and is not required to be lit, and that's also evidenced by the FAA determination of no hazard letter, um, item 13 to the application. Item E, the outs outside storage of personal property, materials, and equipment is prohibited and the entire tower site shall comply with all ordinances relating to nuisances and proper maintenance of the premises. There will not be any outside storage. Any of the ground equipment for Verizon will be maintained within its equipment cabinets on the ground and there will be a generator on the ground of the facility, but there will, no be, will not be any outside storage. And the application <coughs> is filed with the exhibits one through 18 show how we're in compliance with the ordinance. Item F, all towers shall either maintain a galvanized steel finish or subject to any other applicable standards of the FAA, FCC, or other federal or state regulatory authority be painted in neutral colors so as to minimize any adverse visual impact. Uh, because the tower is going to be a monopine design to look like a tree, it will be painted brown so that it will resemble the trunk of a tree and then the limbs will be green. Um, and that's shown in the... Um, photo simulations that were submitted as item 16 in the app, uh, application. And I believe Mr. Lukadu already showed you some of those uh, photo simulations. I don't know how well from these vantage points you can see the color of it, but this will be the proposed design of the tower, the monopine design. Item G, new towers shall comply with a minimum setback of 50 feet, except where the tower is adjacent to a property used for residential purposes. The setback shall be equal to one foot for each foot in tower height. So I will go back to, this is um, an enlarged version of sheet C1 from exhibit six of the site plan. This shows the tower setbacks from all property lines. Uh, the property to the east wraps around to the north, so it's actually 
the north and eastern property. Um, that's the Cheryl Furniture property, so that is not used for residential purposes. So the required setback from that property is 50 feet. Um, as you can see in the top left hand corner, we will meet the 50 foot setback from these two property lines, um, 83, over 83 feet to the north and over 79 feet to the east. Um, the property to the south is used for residential purposes, so we will be set back um, over tower height from that property line. Uh, to the south, we are over 359 feet, I believe, from that property line. Um, also, across the Bethel Road public right-of-way to the west is a residentially used property. Again, we will be set back over tower height from that property line. There are also two uh, residentially used properties to the north um, across the Drexel Road public, public right-of-way. And again, Exhibit 6 with Sheet C1 shows the setbacks from those property lines showing that the tower will be over tower height um, setback from those properties. Item H, all new te telecommunication towers or re relocated telecommunication towers shall be structurally designed to support at least one additional user. Uh, we already discussed that in our um, tower elevation sheet in Exhibit 6 shows that we will accommodate one additional user. The applicant or owner shall provide a statement that the owner is willing to permit an additional user to attach communication facilities on a commercial or reasonably, reasonably base, uh, reasonable basis. And again, that was Exhibit 11 to the application. Uh, the site plan shall indicate a location for at least one additional equipment building. And again, that, that is shown on sheet C2 of Exhibit 6. Item I, standard screening in accordance to 4.4.7 shall be installed around the perimeter of all improvements on the tower site. In terms of screening, um, looking at that provision of the ordinance, um, we are going to use the existing natural vegetation, which is permitted in the ordinance, um, to meet that screening requirement. As you can see from this detailed site plan, again, um, only the minimum amount of vegetation that is needed to rem be removed to install the facility in the access drive will be removed. Uh, the rest will be retained, and um, that will meet the um, screening requirement of that section of um, the landscaping requirement. Specifically, the 4.4.7 requires an opaque screen that exceeds the height of the equipment by a minimum of six inches. If these trees are full grown, they will exceed the height of our ground equipment by six inches. Item J is that any antenna or tower that is not operated for a continuous period of 12 months shall be considered abandoned and shall be removed. If such antenna or tower is not removed within 60 days of receipt of written notice from the city, the city may remove the tower and place a lien on the property for the cost of removal, and we just acknowledge and agreed to that item should it come to fruition. The next item in your packet is item three. This is the policy that Mr. Lukadu um, spoke to you about earlier, saying that this was something that the board specifically had to decide whether we met the policy stated in this section of the ordinance. The policy is that uh, the city of Morganton, that the visual impact of the telecommunication tower and or antenna should be minimized through the use, where feasible, of alternative tower structures. If alternative tower structures are not available or it is technically or economically not feasible to use an alternative tower structure, then joint or multiple use of a single tower in less ob objectionable locations by different co communication companies, sometimes called co-location, should be and is encouraged so as to minimize the need to construct two towers, new towers and to, be, to minimize the overall number of towers throughout the city. This section is intended to implement that policy. So we're looking at two things here, one or three rather, minimizing the visual impact, whether we can use alternative tower structures and whether we can co-locate. As we stated earlier, um, Exhibit 9 of the application details why alternative tower structures are not feasible to meet the network objective for this tower. Um, and then Exhibit 8 goes through the inability to co-locate the equipment on existing structures in the area. In terms of visual impact, uh, Verizon Wireless has done several things to minimize the visual impact to the extent possible for this height of a, stru of a structure. Um, Again, it's being sited on a site that has existing vegetation that's going to be retained around the base of the facility to provide screening. 
and it is going to be designed a stealth design monopine so that it will d be blended to the extent possible with the existing foliage in the area. Unfortunately, with a 200-foot tower, it's not going to be invisible. It's a line-of-sight technology that has to get over the existing foliage and the terrain in the area. Um, but we are taking those steps to minimize the visual impact to the extent possible. And that is, again, shown through uh, the balloon test and the photosems that were provided with the application. All right, finally, the findings of fact for the Board of Adjustment. Um, this is item four on page four of your handout from Mr. Lukadu. The first finding, um, it just says that the, BIA, the Board of Adjustment shall make findings concerning the following. A, the availability of alternative tower structures. Um, again, I would cite the board to exhibit nine of the application, which is the inability to use alternative tower structure statement. Um, item B, the availability of co-location of joint use facilities. Again, I would um, refer the board to exhibit eight of the application, which is the inability to co-locate statement provided by Mary Pat Tindall. Item C, whether the proposed location will provide a minimum level or optimum level of single coverage, the maximum level being desired. Uh, for this finding, I would point the board to exhibit four of the application, that is the network objective provided by the Verizon Wireless Engineer, explaining the need and purpose for the tower and evidencing that this, this location will be um, the optimum level of signal for, for the facility. Item D, the technical requirements that the proposed tower be located on the proposed site. For this, I would point the board again to exhibit four, the network objective in the application, and exhibit five of the application, which is the search area um, map. Again, this ring showing you where the facility must be located in order to function as intended. Um, as you can see from the search area map, uh, the property and the proposed tower location is within the search ring or the search area for the tower. So it is where it needs to be located in order fun to function as intended by the engineer. Item E, the visual impact on the surrounding area, especially natural scenic areas or historic districts. Um, in terms of scenic areas or historic districts, um, exhibit 17 of the application, uh, the NEPA report, shows that there are no historic sites or districts or landmarks that will be impacted by the proposed tower. Um, I am not aware of any scenic areas that will be impacted. And again, we've spoken to the ways that Verizon Wireless is attempting to minimize the visual impact through siting on a vegetated property and through the monopine design that's shown in the photo sims as well. I believe those ha we have now gone through each of those uh, required pieces of evidence and findings of fact for the board. Um, at this time, I would take any questions you may have for me. Thank you so much, Ms. Good. Are there any questions for the witness from the board? Are there any other questions from anyone in the audience or from the city. Hearing none, Ms. Good, I would excuse you, and certainly um, you're welcome to present your other witnesses. I'm not sure they're necessary. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. At this time, we would move to our deliberations, and having heard, oh, let me ask, I don't, I, the chair will take notice that there's not anyone else in the room tonight. Um, any objection to that from the board? I'm glad that you do note that for the record. I'm, my eyes have not gone completely bad. <laughs> Given that uh, there is no other testimony to be received tonight, uh, I would open it up for our deliberations and would welcome any comments, questions, or concerns amongst the board. If we uh, find uh, that, uh, that they are entirely in compliance with all of the uh, requirements, is there a, a simple motion which you might entertain to, uh, that we could uh, then vote on, or do we need to vote on this uh, item by item, in your opinion? No, I, I think what we ought to do is, um, uh, if, if 
you're comfortable, the chair would take the, the liberty to frame um, the finding of, findings of fact and, and present uh, the opportunity for a member of the board to make a motion consistent with the criteria that are set forth for us to deliberate. Well, as a member, I would be appreciative if the chairman would go ahead and do that. Uh, thank you, sir. Are any other comments before I, I, I do that? Then in that event, um, I would uh, ask for a motion to um, approve the applicant with regard to the facts as they are as follows. That there are no, um, no available alternative tower structures available, that there is not the availability, as the evidence showed, of a co-location of joint use facilities, that in fact the applicant proposes to create a structure that will afford co-location uh, uh, opportunities, that the uh, proposed location is in fact uh, going to proffer an optimum level of, uh, of signal coverage consistent with the network objectives of the applicant, that the technical requirements are met uh, and consistent with the search area map which demonstrates uh, the uh, technical requirements as set forth in Exhibit 4 of the application, that the visual impact on the surrounding area uh, is uh, such that it's consistent with the evidence disclosed one other tower in the Morganton city limits uh, that was presented, that there are no historic sites in the location where the project is proposed, and that there are no uh, deleterious impacts on the scenic uh, visual uh, environment. Uh, that the um, proposed project uh, is uh, the application as presented for the proposed project is in fact complete as testified to that the requirements and all the requirements set forth in paragraph 6 of section 3.4.7 paren capital H in paren are in fact met and therefore the project is consistent with the policy set forth in paragraph 2 of uh, the city's zoning ordinance. I, I, any additions to the, the proposed framing of the motion as I have relayed it? I uh, inquire as to whether or not we could also uh, indicate that we uh, do not attach any additional conditions to the issuance of the permit. That, that's correct. Is, is there um, any proposed additional uh, conditions that you would add uh, as part of the motion? Then um, as I have framed the motion, are there any, uh, is there anyone that would like to make that motion as I have related? I'd like to move to make the motion as you have outlined the. Motion's been made to approve consistent with my uh, relating of the findings and facts and the conclusions of this board. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second that motion. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion uh, at this point in time. Hearing no discussion, I'll call the question. Uh, all in favor of approving the new telecommunication structure uh, as described tonight, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Hearing none, the motion carries and the project is approved. Is there any other business that we need to address tonight uh, on behalf of the board? I'd like to note that Mr. Lookadoo said no. Is there a motion to adjourn? Move we adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Then uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 None like sign. Motion carries. Aye. The Board of Adjustment business for tonight is concluded. Thank you so much for being here.